Hi, it's Dr. Mike with Executive Spec Leadership Development talking with you today about how to increase profitability, not how to increase profit. While the term profit and profitability may be interchangeable in their terms, they're not the same thing. Profit is a hard number. Profitability is a measure of efficiency that helps you understand how well you can scale your business. Stick around. We're going to talk about the very practice that will help you guarantee profit in your business through profitability. Welcome to Leadership Guidance. So how then do we scale our business? How do we set our businesses up for profitability? Well, you know as well as I do that there are a myriad of books, ideologies, theories, and practices out there that help you to understand how to build a goal, to plan strategically for that goal, and to navigate through our climate and our culture in order to hit those goals. And they're probably all great ideas. I don't know them all, to be honest with you, but I can tell you this that if we are going to set our organizations up for success, to be able to hit those goals every single time, then there are very specific practices that need to take place within the confines of your organization. The infrastructure of your organization needs to be very healthy before it can ever grow. There is a statement that says, it is the nature of everything alive to grow. Now, there's a lot of functioning things that aren't alive. They're just sick and they're unhealthy and they're dying. And there's a lot of organizations that fit under that category. Yours doesn't have to be one of those. If we can just figure out how to set our organizations up for success, to establish them and build them for profitability. And quite honestly, I'm going to talk with you about three things that are really uh, guaranteed, really, to help you reach the level of success that you have set out there for your organization. I call them the three C's. Collaboration, contribution, and calculation. So we're gonna go through those one at a time. Collaboration, contribution, and calculation. Let's start with collaboration. What does it mean to, uh, to have a healthy practice of collaboration in your organization? Well, here's what it means. When you hire people to come into your organization, the mistake that most leaders make is they bring them in and they, they essentially see them as a means to an end. They are tools within the organization to help reach that goal. Well, quite honestly, the reason why people come into your organization, especially these days, is not necessarily for a paycheck. Of course, they want a paycheck, uh, but they want fulfillment in life. And then they're looking for that fulfillment in your organization. So one of the things we need to keep in mind is business will grow when ideologies are welcomed. Steve Jobs once said that we don't hire smart people to tell them what to do. We hire smart people to tell us what to do. We have problems, challenges, obstacles in the way of our organization. It really, it really benefits the organization and is incumbent upon the leader to bring the team together and say, how will we together as a team, overcome these obstacles. People feel valued when their ideologies and their creativity is, is uh, looked at as valuable for the progression of the organization. One of the tricks about this that really proves to be difficult over and over and over again is something that deals with our personalities. Uh, we all know that you're either an introvert or an extrovert, but I don't know if you knew this or not, but extroverts dominate the leadership roles. There are more extroverts as leaders than there are introverts. And one of the interesting thing about the personality of an extrovert is we, and I'm one of them, we tend to like our own ideas and we struggle with welcoming other ideas. This is a challenge that leaders are going to have to overcome if we're going to set our organizations up to be profitable, to be successful. We need to bring in the workers that we have hired based on the value that we believe that they're going to bring to the organization. And we need to collaborate with them. We need to let them bring their ideas in, share how they would do it. What, what would you do to, to uh, overcome this obstacle? Once workers feel like they are valued 
by their intelligence, their ideologies, and their creativity, they will stick with your organization. They will overcome the worst of storms and the worst tragedies that could strike your organization, and they'll stick with you out of loyalty. That's how we build loyalty. It begins with collaboration. Now, the second thing that has to happen, the second C is the contribution C. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more challenging because while we may overcome the obstacle of collaboration and say, what would you do? How would you do it? One of the things that many leaders struggle with is kind of getting the ideas of some of some of their workers and then going ahead and, and doing all the work themselves. There is a fallacy that exists within um, many organizations, and that is that uh, leaders sometimes think it's just easier to do it yourself. Years ago, I was working for an organization and there were uh, a number of chairs that needed to be set up for an event. And my boss said, Mike, I want you to get a hold of this guy, this guy, this guy, have them come in and set those chairs up for this event. Well, I happened to be there and there weren't that many chairs. And I just looked at the number of chairs and, and I said, you know, it would be easier. I could get it done in probably 30 minutes. And as he was walking out, he stopped and he turned around and he looked at me and he says, Mike, I'm certain that you could get it done in 30 minutes, but these men need to be needed. We need to show them that they are valuable and that they play a part. You see, sometimes we think we're burdening people with responsibility, but delegation is so important within organizations. If we are going to if we're going to build the team that we need within our organization, then we have to ignore the temptation to say, well, it's just easier to do it myself. The other temptation that leaders fall into is sometimes we kind of believe that the only way it's going to get done right is if I do it myself. You've probably heard that before. People might throw this out there. If you want it done right, you've got to do it yourself. Well, that may be true, but that's not a that's not a follower problem. That's a leadership problem. That's a leadership problem in so much as we as leaders have failed to equip our workers to be successful. If we have workers that's continually failing and they're not getting it right, I'm not saying that there aren't some workers out there that need to be let go. Maybe this isn't the right job for them. Maybe this isn't the right place. But for the, for the most part, the majority of our workers, they are depending upon us to equip them to be successful, to help them, show them what, where, where, they're, uh, where they can do the job better. Sometimes it really involves just letting them fail so that they can learn these valuable lessons. Let's face it, the greatest lessons you and I have learned in our lives didn't come out of victory and success. They came out of failure, didn't they? Well, sometimes we are so fearful of failure that we fail to allow our people to contribute to the movement of the organization and help the organization move further. So collaboration, contribution, two very big challenges from the leadership role. The final C that you need to practice within your organization that will help your organization be profitable and hit its goals every single time is what's called calculation. What is calculation within our organizations? Well, we've, we've collaborated. We've gotten their ideas. We're listening to their sense of creativity, um, the, the, the methods that they would use to, to accomplish a task. We've delegated. We've given them responsibility, and now they're contributing to the organization. One of the places where many leaders fall short is they fail to help their workers see how successful they have been and what they're actually contributing to the organization to help the organization move forward. Down throughout the years, I think we have all heard the statement, uh, there's a reason why the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. And in many cases, that's a true statement to consider in so much as it's, it's far better to be forward thinking than it is backward thinking. We want to be looking ahead and not behind from the days of how great it used to be or so we think. But when it comes to workers being able to measure their contributions and how well they're doing, the rearview mirror is bigger than the windshield. Workers need to see how far they have come. Leaders sometimes fail in bringing a worker in and saying, I just want you to know that what you did was just absolutely fantastic. I would have never done it that way. I would have never thought of that. Sometimes we fail to give the accolades and the praises that our workers need. 
But not only that, sometimes organizations can fall into the trap of the ambiguity uh, of the ambiguity of helping the workers in the organization really see how the organization is advancing giving financial reports or giving success reports or or expansion reports or how many new clients we've we've gained there are a lot of things within an organization that can frustrate workers but one of them is failing to know whether or not a worker is doing a good job failing to have the ability to calculate the worker these followers need the ability to calculate we can destroy our teams and we can stunt the organizational growth if our workers do not really feel like they are advancing the organization. Here's a statistic that you may not know. Maybe you do. 50% of workers will be looking for another job within the next couple of months. I want you to think about that. Half of your workers, half of your workers are contemplating getting another job and leaving where you are at. People will stay at a job because they believe that their leader believes in them. The leader looks to them for ideas and he collaborate. He or she collaborates with those workers. They delegate responsibility so the workers can have contribution to the movement of the organization, giving them the, uh, the authority to make decisions and to use their own sense of creativity. Let them contribute to the advancement of the organization but then always coming back and giving them a sense of measurement on how they are doing as a person and how and what they are doing to help the organization move forward. Well, I want to thank you for spending this time watching this uh, this edition of Leadership Diagnosis. Uh, once again, I am Dr. Mike, and my goal is to really look into your business and surgically uh, do the healing to help your organization reach the goals that it has set out for itself. Find us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Visit our website at execuspec.com and reach out to us at info at execuspec.com. And let's see if there's something that we can do to help your organization. Well, once again, thank you for being with me today. And I'll see you on another episode of Leadership Diagnosis.